how to write the opening paragraphs of the background of the study. To begin with, let us assume that you already have conducted a preliminary research on your chosen topic. That is, you already have read a lot of literature and gathered relevant information for writing the background of your study. Let us also assume that you already have identified the gap of your proposed research and have already developed the research questions and thesis statement. If you have not yet identified the gap in your proposed research, you might as well go back to our lesson on how to identify a research gap. So we will just put together everything that you have researched into a background of the study, assuming again that you already have the necessary information. But in this lesson, let's just focus on writing the opening paragraphs. It is important to note at this point that there are different styles of writing the background of the study. Hence, what I will be sharing with you here is not just the only way of writing the background of the study. As a matter of fact, there is no one-size-fits-all style of writing this part of the research or thesis. At the end of the day, you are free to develop your own. However, whatever style it would be, it always starts with a plan which structures the writing process into stages or steps. And the steps that I will share with you here are just some of the most effective ways of writing the background of the study in research. So, let's begin. It is always a good idea to begin the background of your study by giving an overview of your research topic. This may include providing a definition of the key concepts of your research or highlighting the main developments of the research topic. Let us suppose that the topic of your study is the lived experiences of students with mathematical anxiety. Here, you may start the background of your study with a discussion on the meaning, nature, and dynamics of the term mathematical anxiety. The reason for this is too obvious. Mathematical anxiety is a highly technical term that is specific to mathematics. Hence, this term is not readily understandable to non-specialists in this field. So, you may write the opening paragraph of your background of the study with this. Mathematical anxiety refers to the individual's unpleasant emotional mood responses when confronted with a mathematical situation. Since you do not invent the definition of the term mathematical anxiety, then you need to provide a citation to the source of the material from which you are quoting. For example, you may say, Mathematical anxiety refers to the individual's unpleasant emotional mood responses when confronted with a mathematical situation. Iliad 2020 And then, you may proceed with a discussion on the nature and dynamics of the term mathematical anxiety. You may say, Lou specifically identifies some of the manifestations of this type of anxiety, which include, but not limited to, depression, helplessness, nervousness, and fearfulness in doing mathematical and numerical tasks. After explaining to your readers the meaning, nature, and dynamics, as well as some historical development, if you wish to, of the term mathematical anxiety, you may now proceed to showing the problem or gap of the study. As you may already know, the research gap is the problem that needs to be addressed in the study. This is important because no research activity is possible without the research gap. Let us suppose that your research problem or gap is mathematical anxiety can negatively affect not just the academic achievement of the students, but also their future career plans and total well-being. Also, 
there are no known studies that deal with the mathematical anxiety of junior high school students in New Zealand. With this, you may say, if left unchecked, as Shapiro claims, this problem will expand and create a total avoidance pattern on the part of the students, which can be expressed most visibly in the form of cutting classes and habitual absenteeism. As we can see, this will negatively affect the performance of students in mathematics. In fact, the study conducted by Luttenberger and Wimmer revealed that the outcomes of mathematical anxiety do not only negatively affect the student's performance in math-related situations, but also their future career as professionals. Without a doubt, therefore, mathematical anxiety is a recurring problem for many individuals which will negatively affect the academic success and future career of the student. Now that you already have both explained the meaning, nature, and dynamics of the term mathematical anxiety and articulated the gap of your proposed research, you may now state the main goal of your study. And you may say, Hence, it is precisely in this context that the researcher aims to determine the lived experiences of those students with mathematical anxiety. In particular, this proposed thesis aims to determine the lived experiences of the junior high school students in New Zealand and identify the factors that caused them to become disinterested in mathematics. Please note that you should not end the first paragraph of your background of the study with the articulation of the research goal. You also need to articulate the thesis statement which usually comes after the research goal. As is well known, the thesis statement is the statement of your argument or contention in the study. It is more of a personal argument or claim of the researcher, which specifically highlights the possible contribution of the study. For example, you may say, the researcher argues that there is a need to determine the lived experiences of these students with mathematical anxiety because knowing and understanding the difficulties and challenges that they have encountered will put the researcher in the best position to offer some alternatives to the problem. Indeed, it is only when we have performed some kind of a diagnosis that we can offer practicable solutions to the problem. And in the case of the junior high school students in New Zealand who are having mathematical anxiety, determining their lived experiences as well as identifying the factors that caused them to become disinterested in mathematics are the very first steps in addressing the problem. Now, if we combine the bits and pieces that we have written, we can now come up with the opening paragraphs of your background of the study, which reads, Mathematical anxiety refers to the individual's unpleasant emotional mood responses when confronted with a mathematical situation. Elliot 2020 Liu specifically identifies some of the manifestations of this type of anxiety, which include, but not limited to, depression, helplessness, nervousness, and fearfulness in doing mathematical and numerical tasks. If left to rule unchecked, as Shapiro claims, this problem will expand and create a total avoidance pattern on the part of the students, which can be expressed most visibly in the form of cutting classes and habitual absenteeism. As we can see, this will negatively affect the performance of students in mathematics. In fact, the study conducted by Luttenberger and Wimmer revealed that the outcomes of mathematical anxiety do not only negatively affect the student's performance in math-related situations, but also their future career as professionals. Without a doubt, therefore, mathematical anxiety is a recurring problem for many individuals, which will negatively affect the academic success and future career of the student. 
Hence, it is precisely in this context that the researcher aims to determine the lived experiences of those students with mathematical anxiety. In particular, this proposed thesis aims to determine the lived experiences of junior high school students in New Zealand and identify the factors that caused them to become disinterested in mathematics. The researcher argues that there is a need to determine the lived experiences of these students with mathematical anxiety because knowing and understanding the difficulties and challenges that they have encountered will put the researcher in the best position to offer some alternatives to the problem. Indeed, it is only when we have performed some kind of a diagnosis that we can offer practicable solutions to the problem. And in the case of the junior high school students in New Zealand who are having mathematical anxiety, determining their lived experiences as well as identifying the factors that caused them to become disinterested in mathematics are the very first steps in addressing the problem. Now, as we can see, we can find in the first paragraph five essential elements that must be articulated in the background of the study. Namely, first, a brief discussion on what is known about the topic under investigation. Second, an articulation of the research gap or problem that needs to be addressed. Third, what the researcher would like to do or aim to achieve in the study, or the research goal. Fourth, the thesis statement, that is, the main argument or claim of the paper. And lastly, the major significance or contribution of the study to a particular discipline. So, that's how you write the opening paragraphs of your background of the study. The next lesson will talk about writing the body of the background of the study.